It's ironic that the most popular day for giving flowers, St. Valentine's Day, falls in the middle of winter. So most of us have to rely on the florist. If you're a guy, you probably know more about the stock market, your car, or hunting and fishing than you do about choosing flowers for your sweetheart. So how about a couple of tips that'll help you make just the right selection? First of all, if red roses are what you're after, I hope you already have your order placed and you're prepared to pay a premium. You see, these are the signature flower of Valentine's Day. So if you have difficulty finding them, you might consider another color option. For instance, you might consider some of these bicolored or salmon or pale pink roses. They'll send the same message and they may be a more preferred color and look better in the home of the person you're giving them to. While roses are probably the most popular, they're certainly not everyone's favorite. You might consider something like tulips. They run a very close second and they can be beautiful in a vase all alone or mixed with other spring flowers such as Dutch iris, anemones, and daffodils. One rule I always keep in mind when putting together a bouquet, I try to select flowers that would be blooming in the garden all about the same time. Now, if you want to take a slightly different angle and let fragrance be your theme, there are about three flowers that immediately come to mind that you can choose from that will never let you down. Freesia, hyacinths, and of course, the beautiful oriental lily. Who doesn't love to receive a beautiful bouquet, particularly when it's really fragrant? I want to give you an idea of thinking outside the box with regard to bouquets by integrating lots of beautiful herbs. We're going to start by taking a piece of brown craft paper. What I'm doing here is I'm just going to cut this into a square. The size of this will depend on the size of bouquet you want to create. But I'm just taking about a 14 inch square piece of paper and with that, I'm going to do a bouquet of herbs that I just gathered out of the garden. I'm going to use some thyme, this beautiful rosemary. I wish you could smell how gorgeous this is. Taking my spiky rosemary, which is the tallest, and I'm putting it toward the back of this bouquet. And then I'm going to add some of this beautiful gray colored sage. It's so aromatic, and I love the contrast. See, texture is so important, just as important as color, in my opinion. And then what we might do is add some of this ferny, soft, ethereal looking dill. So as I create the bouquet, I just hold it tightly. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut this off. They're all the same, same length. And then I'm gonna take just a little bit of this floral tape and I'm gonna tie the bundle together. Just a couple of rounds of that. And then to make the bouquet presentable, what I'm going to do is take a sandwich bag and a little bit of paper towel that I'm going to moisten, some water. I'm going to wrap the bottom stems of this, drop it in the sandwich bag like this. We'll have a little extra plastic with the sandwich bag and so I'll just pull that around. And I'm going to take a piece of this jute, tie this off securely. Now with the moisture in here, the bouquet will last much longer. Okay, now let's talk about the presentation. I'm going to take the bouquet and lay it roughly the center point of this diagonal 14 inch square. I'm going to fold off the corners like this, just to give it a nicer little 
presentation edge. I'm gonna fold it over like this. We'll take the bottom up. And then pull the left side over. And around like that. So you can see we have a craft paper cone for it. And now it's just a matter of tying it off with another piece of this jute twine. Now to make it even more special, you can add your favorite flowers to this bouquet, like white tulips are a classic. They blend beautifully with the sage, the dill, the rosemary, and the thyme. And there you have it, a beautiful and fragrant bouquet, something that's a little out of the ordinary. For St. Valentine's Day, there's no better way to put a smile on someone's face than to give them fresh flowers. And I suppose the bloom of the day would have to be the rose. But there's so many varieties of fresh flowers to choose from, any of them would be a treat. If you receive some of these beauties, of course the name of the game is to make them last as long as possible. And there are actually some things you can do that work. For instance, feeding them. Even though these have been cut, nutrient is still important. Begin by preparing a solution of lukewarm water to about the same amount of lemon-lime soda and a couple of teaspoons of bleach. The sugar in the soda actually serves as the food, and the citric acid helps the flour take up the food more efficiently. And the bleach, well, it just keeps the water clean. Now, you can get these little packets from the florist which serve the same purpose, but this is just a simple homemade recipe that's always worked for me. Now, it may seem odd that one should have to feed their cut flowers, but it really works. A couple of years ago, I did an experiment. I put one bouquet of roses in the solution and the other in just plain water. Those put in the solution stayed beautiful for four to five days longer. Before you slip the flowers into the solution, remove the lower leaves like this, and then I always recut the stems underwater at a slight angle. This seems particularly helpful with roses. It's also important to know that they'll stay fresher longer, no matter what the flower is, if you'll keep them as cool as possible and out of a sunny window. Setting the mood for a romantic supper together doesn't have to stress you out. You can make it simple and elegant with just a few elements. You know, sometimes we find ourselves in the doghouse with that special person in our lives and we need to do something to sort of make it up. Maybe you didn't do enough for Valentine's Day or didn't remember Valentine's Day or maybe a special day like a birthday or an anniversary. So this idea is really for those guys out there who may have let something slip. And the idea is to just create a beautiful, warm, comfortable table setting it's very romantic for two. So I started with fire in the fireplace. There's nothing like a warm fire to set the mood. And then what I've done is I've covered the table with these little votive candles, and I've used 20 of them, about 10 on this side and about 10 on that side. Now, sometimes you gotta get clever because you don't have a lot of time. So in this case, if you look at the centerpiece, it's a bowl of apples. But these apples really kind of work with the color scheme I've got going on here. I had these green dishes, I had some green apples in the kitchen, I'm using a brown table, and I actually moved a table downstairs and moved some chairs from the kitchen down here to set this up. So I think when you show that kind of effort to that person who's really special in your life, they really appreciate it. Now look a little closer, you'll see that I've taken some brown paper, I've run it across the table in two ways, bisecting in the center. And this is just uh, painter's paper, the kind of paper that they put down on the floor before they paint uh, trim. I've just taken a marker and I've gone around here writing characteristics about that person. That they're funny, they're happy. Over here I wrote, you're so perfect. And over here, rather than saying, I'm lucky, I'm gonna say, I'm so lucky. Those little things make a big difference. So just draw all kinds of things on here. I'm doing little hearts. If they're funny sayings that you both share, you might write those down. And what happens is this becomes a little keepsake. It's almost like a card that you give them at the end of the evening. And then you wanna make sure that you have a nice bottle of wine, maybe two. And in this case, what I've done is I've taken the same napkin that I had, and I just used it to wrap the bottle of wine. Now, to make the evening even more special, if you can prepare the meal, 
What's great about this table setting is that you can get it set up well ahead of time and all you really have to do is just light the candles. You don't have to worry about flowers because we use the apples and they're going to stay fresh for a long time. Thank you.